Hello, my name is Samuel Scroggs, and in today's lesson, we will be talking about some of the best practices for crew resource management when operating the Seastro Barmore PPX. Crew resource management is an important part of any UAS mission as it ensures the operation is conducted in a safe, efficient, and professional manner. CRM, as it will be referred to through the rest of the presentation, helps the person in command, or PIC, utilize their crew in the most effective way possible by creating a set of procedures to follow throughout the mission. In this presentation, we will be going over some of the core principles and practices of CRM and how they will help your operation. The first thing to think about when approaching CRM is considering who is going to be on your crew and what positions they will fill. The chart on the right describes some examples of crew member positions, their designated tasks, and their required credentials. Although these aren't the exact roles given to the Purdue Brownmore team, it is important to assign clear responsibilities to all crew members. This allows for a formal communication environment. When considering the credentials of each member, the PIC should be the most experienced member of the team as they will be in charge of the operation. The other members of the team may not necessarily need to be Part 107 certified, however, the more experienced the crew, the easier the operation will be. Once crew members have been selected and given designated roles, it is important to lay out go, no-go criteria for missions. Usual go, no-go criteria will set minimum weather requirements, amounts of visible satellites, and potential minimum ready-by times for the crew members. These criteria will usually consist of personal minimums such as max wind speed of 5 knots, a minimum of 12 visible satellites, or all crew members on site by 10 a.m. Having go, no-go criteria will help ensure the safety and viability of the mission by setting standards that the entire crew feels safe with. The most important factor in CRM is communication. Having a sterile cockpit environment allows for the crew to focus on the operation without any distractions. The environment requires the crew members to keep the communication topic on the mission and only talk when necessary. Furthermore, the crew should have laid out standard terms they use when talking about the mission. Using multiple terms for the same word can lead to confusion and error during the mission, which could potentially be fatal in an emergency situation. It is important that the PIC reviews terminology with the crew and corrects any mistakes heard on the field. Additionally, it is a good idea to have a short list of emergency hand signals to use in case radio communication fails. This ensures that your crew can still operate effectively during a communication emergency. Having a uniform method of communication is important for CRM, as the crew will most likely be spread out over a large area. The most common method for communication in these situations is over two-way radio. This can be accomplished using walkie-talkies or apps such as Zello. The PIC will usually have the second in command communicating for them so that they can focus on watching and operating the UAS. The sterile cockpit environment comes into play heavily here, as communication channels need to be clear of any unnecessary chatter. Teams out in the field will usually not speak unless spoken to by the PIC or whoever is dictating for them. As previously discussed, the language used should be uniform throughout the operation. This extends to descriptions of the vehicle's direction as well. Descriptions such as, the UAS is at 12 o'clock from my position, is a clear and efficient way to communicate the aircraft's position to the PIC. Whether the aircraft is being assembled or having its position checked in the air, cross-checking information is an important aspect of CRM. It is crucial to have information verified by more than one person so that the margin of errors can be reduced. When the PIC is asking for the position of the aircraft, a second crew member should confirm the position after it has been communicated by the first. This same process should be applied to the completion of the checklist to ensure each item within it is completed successfully. Cross-checking not only helps to reduce mistakes, but also keeps all crew members involved with the mission. Finally, make sure that the checklist is read aloud and each task within it is stated as complete or incomplete. Within the checklist itself, mission critical steps should be given to the PIC or second in command. Other steps should be assigned to crew members based on their designation within the team. If the reader of the checklist forgets which step they are on, it is always best to go back to the first step and work back to the current step. As successful platform assembly and teardown relies on the checklist, it is important that each crew member fulfills their designated tasks and verbally confirms that each task is complete. 
After watching this presentation, you now have an idea of some of the best practices and principles to use when engaging in CRM. For additional training content, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.